Hi, this is Usama Rizvi and welcome to another episode of Monday Mac Review. Um, um, in this episode, I wanted to talk about oil markets specifically because uh, as always, there's a lot happening in the oil markets and oil tends to be, continues to be uh, one of the most important and strategic commodities in the world. You can see this in this first chart here, uh, which was by Visual Capitalist, which shows the size of the oil markets and the other commodities. So, in, in fact, even if you combine the other top 10 um, commodity markets by valuation, um, the value, the valuation of the oil market is still a bit, uh, more than that. So that was just a very interesting chart I wanted to include. And it is also actually relevant to our discussion today. Uh, the second slide, it talks about, you can see it's very simple. It talks about um, that oil prices have dropped further 2% on interest rate hike worries. And uh, this speaks to speaks after a wider trend and thread and theme have going on in the oil markets recently. So many people think that Fed is over with it, the interest rates will start to pivot now and everything will be hunky-dory, but that is not the case. I still believe Mark Rosano has written about it. He still believes you've spoken about it in the, the Econ show. We've spoken about it in the Mark's Insights, Weekly Insights, and my weekly research articles that you can uh, go find on primaryregion.co that the the inflation still remains. It is sticky, it is stubborn, it is, isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, therefore, the, we will expect more interest rate hikes, at least two more. And that is why oil prices have gr dropped further because that if interest rates go up, um, you know, all the domino effect and hence the um, demand for oil also gets affected. It faces downward pressure. The next chart, which is uh, the CFTC and ICE commodity uh, data, uh, contracts data, it, sh it shows the same thing. This is by John Kemp from Reuters, of course. Wonderful compilation, always every week. Uh, so he, he he mentions that hedge fund and other money managers purchase equivalent about 25 million barrels of oil, of, um, oil in the six most, uh, most important contracts. And overall, the combined position is 346 million barrels, which is almost... Uh, unchanged from 350 million barrels back on March 28th. Um, and this is this data is, of course, ending June 20th. So we see that there hasn't been much of a difference, whereas there has been a very important development of the surprise cuts by OPEC Plus that he mentioned as well. And despite that, the positions in crude oil is basically chill, unchanged from the last March, uh, since late March. And uh, even in the middle distillates, uh, the position remains almost the same as of the April. So what does this show? It shows that there aren't any concerns, um, even in the paper markets, um, about an uh, undersupply or something like that. In terms of the physical markets, Mark has written about uh, in one of his about it in one of his insights where he shows how global oil on water is highest, oil in transit is uh, is at its highest, uh, considering the seasonal leverages. Um, there has been a huge build-up, a glut of unsold Nigerian oil. And this chart by Votex also shows the same. It shows that um, the indicators of a well-supplied oil market. So if even if it is not oversupply, the oil markets are well-supplied. You see that uh, the Russian um, STS activity has increased in June. Um, gasoline imports from Bad 1 are at multi-years highs. Uh, Latin America is looking good. And the... And the, and the Calendar spreads are also breaking down. So, um, whatever whatever is happening in the paper markets is it's rare that it happens actually, but it is also being corroborated by the physical markets. The next chart speaks about it um, in a very very convincing way. We have the OECD commercial petroleum inventories here, and you can see that this is as the title of the article was that this is a glass half full, half empty situation for oil markets. Why do I say that? Because commercial inventories are just minus 35 million barrels below their 10 year, 10 year seasonal average. And given the, the, the stocks, um, I mean, they almost align with the long-term seasonal average. So it is not surprising to see the spot prices and in calendar spreads are also close to average. And uh, this is there. And on the other hand, uh, we have high exports from Russia, Venezuela, Iranian oil is there. Um, um, interest rates are rising and there is a you know, there is a slew of economic uh, news that tells us that uh, the global economy is still not doing well um, so this 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 rhetoric this narrative about an oil 
under supply or this there would be a supply crunch in the in the in the future i can't get it i believe the opposite is true and while i was talking about the global economy you you can have a look at the german uh, at the european economic engine which is germany where recession continues to worsen so it is not only about recession but it is also that the recession continues to worsen uh, ifo business climate index which measures the health of the commercial sector it was uh, it fell to 88.5 from 91.5 in may and similarly the purchasing pmi index uh, from germany also fell dramatically it fell to 41 from 43 and anything below 50 signals a contraction this is about to enter i mean 1330s uh, higher 30s um, same is the case with china its factory output reduced recently um, so overall these shows my articles marx articles it's just out of a re uh, reassurance uh, reinforcement of the fact that we need to be very careful while becoming extraordinarily positive um things are uh, getting better in some ways uh, as we discussed last time um the rolling recovery theory a uh, quote and quote but still it will take a lot of time before we get there uh the few indicators like um, you follow the chinese economy you follow the german economy you follow the global freight rates you follow other indicators all of them unanimously very clearly uh, show that the global economy is slowing down i i showed this in the last show as well when we had a look at the bloomberg's indicator and out of all of those one i mean more than five of them were below average or nothing was above average and three or four were just there on the average um moving forward the next slide was a little bit interesting and i wanted to add it before we move towards the market sentiment tracker it speaks about the global copper uh, stocks are sliding as well so uh, the global exchange inventory is now down 45000 45500 tons at the start of the year and it is the lowest since 20, 2008 but what is mysterious about it and i'll dig up further into it that this isn't translating into more economic activity because oil and go copper both are very vital for the global economy and they move in tandem with each other most of the times so this is something this is a development that we need to look at this was a very interesting development market sentiment tracker the left side recessionary side continues to um uh, uh, you know be busy there is a 71% chance of the us economy will fall into recession um bank of america expects us economy to fall into recession by early 2024 oil prices dropped uk barely escaped a recession resisting a 0.1% economic growth the uh, index of factory activity in china fell for the third consecutive month um a european manufacturing pmi is also down so el nino still threatens economic growth specifically in the us uh, we are also facing uh, many of its effects so overall the recessionary outlooks continues to grow that is all from my side today i'll see you next week thank you so much for watching